My name is Sam Baknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The Republic of Macedonia is 20 years old, an adult with the problems and promises that characterize early puberty. The country now has a young and dynamic leadership, which has succeeded to transform Macedonia's image both domestically and abroad for better and also for worse. According to repeated polls, for the first time in two decades, people are optimistic and investors sanguine. But there are troubling currents afoot. Macedonia is undergoing a worrisome change of character. If not reversed, these malignant processes will backfire, and Macedonia's hopes would be cruelly dashed and shattered. Under Nikola Gruevski, the current Prime Minister, Macedonia for the first time stands a chance of becoming a prosperous member of Europe and the international community. Its history of self-destructive, self-defeating behaviors can be avoided and averted. All the countries in the mutilated post-communist parts of Europe ended up poor. Yet as opposed to their neighbors, some polities failed to alleviate their misery or ameliorate their dire predicament. Macedonia is a prime example of such systemic failure. The denizens of Macedonia are not only impoverished, which they are, but they also feel like losers and failures. And to avoid conf confronting these unpalatable truths, and to fend off a tormenting low self-image, the citizenry of Macedonia have developed a host of psychological defense mechanisms, all of them pathological, none of them benign, all of them dangerous to the future of Macedonia. The first one is magical thinking. It is the belief in a fantastic world in which miracles occur, saviors materialize, one is immune to the consequences of one's inaction, and all ends well regardless of current realities. The leaders of Macedonia, left, right and center, provide their voters whom they generally hold in contempt with fairy tales and grandiose fantasies about multi-billion dollar investments which typically never materialize. Worse still, this obsessive preoccupation with Deus Ex Machina salvation by outsiders detracts from and distracts these scarce economic resources at the disposal of the government. As a result, the authorities neglect to tackle the most pressing problems facing their nation, unemployment, dysfunctional institutions, and venality. In the meantime, asset bubbles, now in real estate and previously in the bloated and much manipulated stock exchange, imperil the country's financial system. Then there is the messianic religious leadership. From the Caucasus to the republics of former Yugoslavia, leaders of economically decrepit countries in the region present themselves as either messiah-like saviors or martyrs to the cause, haunted by hate-filled and jealous opposition or victimized by outside forces. Such leaders ostentatiously dedicate themselves to the nation, forsaking their private life or worldly pleasures. Their subjects crave for honest and hard-working leadership, and so hungrily succumb to the allure of ceaseless media campaigns which border on a personality cult. They suspend their disbelief and dispense with rationality. The dear leader becomes the focal point of their hopes and dreams, while other institutions, parliament, the judiciary, the media, shrink, wither, and languish. Often this populist worship, this personality cult, result in an authoritarian regime that gradually, almost imperceptibly, replaces consensus politics. The beloved leader keeps paying lip service to democracy and functioning institutions, but effectively he contemptuously ignores them. He purges the civil service, stuffing it with cronies and relatives, and he treats the opposition as traitors and enemies of the state. The media is brutally trampled on, coerced into cooperation, or corrupted and co-opted with advertising and perks. The third mechanism is denial of reality. Unable to face the dismal condition of their country, people in Macedonia choose to simply deny it. Hype and spin in public relations replace real action and sub substantive reforms. The language itself is subverted. Corruption is redefined by the powers that be 
to exclude blatant nepotism. A mere change of ownership hailed as a revolution, is hailed as a uh, revolutionizing foreign investment. Promises and plans are presented as facts, fait accompli. Statistical methodology is altered to produce favorable results. Four historians, half-deranged pundits and pseudo-archaeologists are recruited to transform grandiose myths and outright lies into official history. Thus, reality is done away with and replaced with fantasy. Finally, there is aggressive assertiveness. Rather than accept the fact that a nation's low self-esteem and lack of self-confidence are outcomes of its failures, the leadership reverses cause and effects. They say that the country's repeated failures are now officially the result of people's wavering self-esteem and self-confidence. People who doubt the leadership's claims and Dr. Data don't believe in the future of the nation, says the leadership. They don't believe that Macedonia can succeed. Dissidents are therefore branded as pusillanimous traitors. Thus, everyone is encouraged to adopt a loathsome variant of newfound assertiveness that borders on narcissism and is unpleasantly aggressive. It does not reflect an inner conviction in the real capabilities and skills of the populace. It is merely demonstrative and hyperbolic, and therefore a form of chauvinistic propaganda.